some time, we have followed the exploits of Milo Yiannopoulos, once considered one of the most influential people on the right wing in America. But Milo Yiannopoulos has had a rough time. See, Milo got canceled by the far right. And then the only option he had was to go further far right. And where this has led Milo is to being a trad calf. And he is involved with an organization called Church Militant. Now, the name kind of says everything that you need to know about Church Militant. Church Militant is a insular, hyper-Catholic, anti-gay cult. And their leader, the founder, is a guy named Michael Voris, who is an ex-gay. Now, Michael Voris and Milo Yiannopoulos have had multiple interviews together, which are up on my channel. And they are very, very weird, okay? They're, the sexual tension is out of control, and they were literally eye-fucking each other and making making lewd jokes that, that fucking weird white Americans do not understand, but that they totally know. And if you watch it, these two ex-gay guys are definitely not ex-gay, and they are definitely not ex-gay with each other. However, what that has— um, what that has uh, has led us to is Milo Yiannopoulos continually having to debase himself further and further in the name of God. Now, you might say, damn, that really sounds like a kink dynamic. And I would say, you're correct. And I have no other explanation for what we are about to see other than the fact that Milo Yiannopoulos is engaged in a BDSM Dom sub power exchange relationship with Michael Voris and Michael Voris is literally personally making him do penance so that they can both get closer to God by that I mean they can both come together and let me show you why I say this and you'll believe me you will believe me in just a second because that's right what we are about to watch is Milo Yiannopoulos doing Christian telesales he is literally operating the uh, fucking QVC, QVC, QVC of Christianity. We know Mike is holding the leash. We know Mike is holding the leash. It is Christian QVC, and this is a 30-minute segment we get to watch of Milo Yiannopoulos selling um, fucking M Mother Mary's. So this is the gift. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Holy fucking shit. This is the most, some of the most humiliating shit. It is a, take notes, doms of the audience. If you can convince your bratty sub to become a Jesus salesman, a Mother Mary statue salesman, as a part of your dominance dynamic, you have succeeded. Now, you might be doing irreparable harm to the state of politics in America. You might be severely damaging the lives of gay men who take this shit seriously. However, I gotta say, it's a power move. It's a fucking power move. So let's watch together without any further ado. Now, I don't know how much of this we're actually going to be able to handle because it might be really boring, but I don't think it will be. Look at how happy this little bitch is right here. Holy shit. Let's try. Let's, uh, let's see, okay? Let's see how it goes, shall we? Let's just dive right in. I'm fucking ready. Hello, and welcome to the Church Militant Shop. My name is Milo Yiannopoulos, and I'm here with my co-host, Deborah Vaughan. How are you doing today, Deborah? Ooh, Deborah does not like Milo Yiannopoulos. This bitch is like, ooh, he's too, he's still too much of a faggot for me. That's this lady right here. You can see it in her eyes. Oh man, look at that fucking death glare. She knows she's got to be here. She's like, I know Michael's fucking this little bitch. I know it. Milo is a top. Nope. N are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Milo is a top. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God. Talk about not getting it. Listen, good faith actor, I love you, but holy fucking shit. Talk about a miscalculation. Especially not for Michael Voris. Especially fucking not. Let's continue. Please, Jesus, before I lose my mind. Hey, how are you? I'm well. I'm Good. happy because this is the first of our shows, and we're beginning today with, well, probably the most important woman in history, wouldn't you say? I think so. She's certainly the most beloved, and we've got today uh, three 
items, all in celebration, reverence, of course, of the Blessed Mother, uh, the Virgin Mary. We're here to sell you three special collectible Virgin Marys made in reverence and honor of the Virgin Mary and her holy influence on the planet. Now you can get the Virgin Mary collectible tote bag for just three easy payments of nine ninety nine. We're going to start with um, this wonderful statue, which we both own. We fact. do, but in different uh, medium, oh, different color. That's right. You've got the silver finish, yes, and I've got this bronze finish. Tell us a little bit about the material this is made from, because it's a little bit special, isn't it? It looks like a it, it's going to weigh a ton and cost a hundred dollars right. to ship. And I want to make sure I have it right. So it's it's a um, cold cast, and it's hand painted bronze color, or you can get it in the pewter. Sometimes uh, one or the other might be on back order, but they come in. Um, it's very popular. Um, Poly resin. What that means, it's made out of fucking rubber. Guys, that's what that, it, this thing is made out of plastic. This is a plastic painted figurine they're charging $87 for. That's what that means. Just, just so we can translate here, that's a plastic statue that they've painted with gold, with bronze and silver paint. That's $87. It's cheap junk. That is junk. It. I have a shrine at home, and I have mine in in my shrine, and it looks very, very nice. Um, and it, it, you know, and it's called the Adoring Virgin, and I adore her. I actually <laughs> have a rosary hanging from her. I do the same thing. Do you I do the same thing? One of the nice things about this particular statue is the shroud. Mm -hmm. And on your silver version, um, something shows up on the back a little bit more than on this one. This is more of a sort of uh, like a, 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 an aged metal finish. On the silver one, you get a little bit more of the detail popping out, I think. But I'm just going to turn it's this... a contrast of color. See, now this lady doesn't like the fact that she's being upplayed. She's being totally blown out of the water by Milo. Milo has gay powers. He's like, oh, the details on the shroud. He's playing up his fucking gay energy so hard and she's just like it looks nice it's the virgin mary and he's like oh her shroud lays gently on her curves and there's a symbol you can see on the back and she's like Rrr. this lady's about to lose her shit she's about to go fucking postal yeah. right i'm gonna turn this around and maybe you could explain to us a little bit about the shroud so the shroud it, it's got this um the stars on it um and it just uh reflects what this is all about. I will not be out Christianed by this rancid fruit it's exactly exactly humphead credit to humphead for that line oh my god all about and um it also has so much depth to it and any kind of lighting that goes around it especially candles just bring the depth depth of this statue out and it like comes alive it's it like comes alive this lady is a terrible saleswoman they brought milo on because milo is one of the best salespeople you've ever met just so you know milo is the slipperiest motherfucker this guy is a god tier salesman if you if you had the unluck of having milo yiannopoulos as your salesperson you're probably broke right now if milo yiannopoulos tried to sell you a video game thing you'd walk out having bought an entire fucking home net uh home uh theater setup that's how good milo is you know milo's a, 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 a rotten piece of shit person but i will tell you this this guy knows how to bullshit and you're gonna see that you've already seen it but watch how far it's gonna go i guarantee you 30 minutes this guy's gonna bullshit a lot it's just i think magnificent the way it's done the folds mm -hmm. um just the creases and everything is the detail on this is incredible I'm astonished. It's called a poly resin, um, this material. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you know, all the beautiful stars that are, are polished a, a slightly different color. Mm -hmm. I'm a, amazed by the level of detail they managed to get, like it was a, a bronze, you know, like it was made of metal and it would cost, you know, $100 right. to ship it to you if it was bronze. Right. Um, there's so much beautiful detail in this, not just from this lovely feeling. Also, notice, here's a sales thing. Here's some sales ana analysis. Notice how he plays, he plays up the fact that if it was made out of bronze, it would cost you $100 just to ship it to you. He's, he's selling the fact that it's not made out of metal, the fact that it's made out of plastic as a good thing. That right there is skilled salesmanship. Nothing is bad. The fact that it's plastic is a good thing because it saves you money on shipping. You see? Yeah, yeah, you see? 
You see? Yeah, she That's... Does. But right. also a hallmark, I think, of all of the very finest statues, whether they're marble, metal, whatever, is this incredible illusion of draped fabric. Well, yes, and because you don't just have the... It's not just gorgeous from the front. The whole thing mm -hmm. is just beautiful. It's just so nicely done. And... Um, they got, de they got really detailed on those toes there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We can, we can we get a toe cam in here? Oh, shit. It's got artic- It's almost- It's like articulated toes. Look at that shit. Toe cam. Uh-oh. She got feet. She got fucking feet. Toe fans, rise up. Pleased with it. And we've sold a lot of them. And we will continue selling them because it's just um an icon, icon piece that- People really love. So. Oh, careful, lady. She almost said it was an icon. And guess what? That is bad. You don't you don't say the word icon. You don't say an icon is an idol. She had to say an iconic piece. Uh oh, she almost slipped up. That's a sin. So it's eleven and three quarter inches tall. If you're okay. thinking about how this is going to fit into your uh, shrine or maybe even a bedside table. I know sometimes people like to wake up and say good morning to their favorite, yes. uh, you know, people and saints and whatnot. Um, it's available in bronze and pewter, and they're both eighty-seven fifty. We don't, we're not yet set up for two easy payments, despite our. Not uh... yet. We're not <laughs> look, he even made a joke. Look at that. This guy. Look at him. He's even de he's he's making self-referential, uh, downplaying the uh, the the format. He's like, oh, we can't offer three easy payments. <laughs> this guy's a, this guy's a sales ace. This dude's gonna sell every single ex-gay guy in the entirety of the church militant is gonna buy one of these and immediately shove it up their ass. Okay. But we're we're hoping to offer that one day or two easy payments. But she's she's just under twelve inches tall. She's available in those two different um, they call them accent finishes. We've got right. statues in the, in the shop here that are um, fully painted. Right. And we'll see some of Colour. those later. Yes. But the thing I like about this is this, this wonderful burnished, bronzy, aged uh, colour that she's got. And that wonderful, the face on this is especially good. Because, the you know, face is wonderful. It's so peaceful. I hope you, know, you, I hope you know what I mean when I say there are good Marys and bad Marys. Of course, the real Mary, there's only, there's only good things about her. But, but there, there are some, some Marys with a face that's a little unfortunate. They haven't put the work in to make sure that she's got right. just the right expression and features. Right. This, on the other hand, as you can see um, at home, it's just, it's just beautiful. You told me something interesting about this. Um, th these, are, these are sometimes kept by people. I'm a bad Mary. I'm so bad. Oh my fucking god! Outside, as well as inside. They are, and and um, while they might change their patina a bit by being outside in the elements, um, some people like that. They like that look that mm -hmm. might turn a little um green. The like the, like one change. of the big bronzes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how they do that with. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But it's very, it's very um, substantial, you know, and. Elegant. It's very substantial. And all the qualities of like a this lady is struggling. I guarantee you, Michael Voris was like, "Oh my God, we got to get Carol in HR out of the sales division because she's not selling any Virgin Marys." And they're like, "Milo," he's like, "This is what happened." I'm telling you, this is the conversation. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I'm gonna channel Michael Voris here for a second. This is Michael Voris on the Vortex where. Where, what did he say? Where propaganda gets sucked down the drain. I'm here today to talk about the experience of being ex-gay. Milo, my pet, come here. Come here, little boy. Come here. Come here, you little brat. You're going to be taking over my sales division. We need to get more Mother Marys out the door and, listen, Carol's just not cutting it anymore. We need her to, you know, get trapped and thrown down the drain. You know what I mean? So we're going to need you, my little boy, to take over as a test of faith. Can you? And then Milo's like, no, daddy, no. I can't do sales. I can't. It'll ruin my image, daddy. No. And then he's like, shut the fuck up. You listen to me. I'm sorry for swearing. God forgive me for swearing. You're going to do what I tell you because if you don't listen to me, and he's turning red right now, 
like remember in the previous interviews he's like fucking turning red because he's getting so hard that all the blood in his body is rushing to his fucking dick and he's just like you're going to do this or else salvation will never be yours i am the one who stands between you and god and you will obey me my ch- my child and then and then Malinopoulos is like yes daddy i'm so sorry That's what happened. That's how Milo got into this. I'm telling you right fucking now, this is how Milo got into having to do this. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cream cream bun mommy is on the right path. Give, but like I say, in the, in the shrine um, at your home, it's it's quality, you know, and it, and it shows. Yeah, this polyresin stuff, it's really come a long way in the last remember, 20 years. Remember, just remember, just remember, Milo Yiannopoulos is the guy who, just a few years ago, was on national TV on a weekly basis, roasting the shit out of fucking other gay people, out of lesbians who he hates, making fun of trans people, getting millions of dollars, going to fucking parties every single night, flying around in a private jet. And now he's doing this, and you're telling me there isn't a, a BDSM thing going on? You're wrong. I'm sorry, chat. Oops. I'm sorry, chat, but you guys are fucking stupid if you don't realize what's going on. You just do not, you do not understand. Okay? I'm just telling you. If you do not understand it, yeah, 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 he was racist to Larry Wilmore live. There is no possible way outside of sexual gratification that this motherfucker is doing a fucking QVC for, ch- for Jesus, okay? I'm just telling you, every gay person in the chat knows that I'm correct, and every straight person is like, I don't know, I don't buy it. But every gay person in chat, you know exactly what I'm saying is true. This guy was on top of the world, and now he's selling Jesus statues? Mmm, no. There's something in it for him. Daddy is going to give him a firm hand and maybe put him in the Christ cage. Maybe he gets to spend a night in the Christ cage if he's very good been creating <laughs> principal skinner voice mm, but what if i pass my fetish off as a grift guys more common than you might think statues for people at home mm-hmm. that are not necessarily cast in metals because it's so inconvenient and also can be dangerous when you have kids around you know right, you right, can do right. serious injuries to children when you've got big <laughs> hunks of, uh, of metal on the table especially with sharp edges and things this stuff is um if you've ever had one of these resin statues at home it, it it weighs a lot. I mean, it's it's, it it's substantial. And the other thing I like is the, these lovely polished details that they're able to produce. So she's got she's got a sort of collar, and then over the veil you've got that lovely edge. It photographs beautifully. Right, and it's almost like the high lows um, just give the depth, you know, the of high the, lows. the dimension to this that that is just beautiful. I think it's wonderful. Um, it's. As I say, I own one of these. I have it on. Um, so I've got a, a little bedside table because I like to sort of. I get out of bed quite late, I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> and I, by the time I get out of bed, I'm already feeling. Bad about being sluggish and indolent. So I like to sort of roll out of bed and straight into something wholesome. <laughs> and, you know, sort of Start apologize every right day for, for uh, getting out so late. So I. What kind of person? loves to get up late and then immediately punish themselves for them their own laziness guys that's turbo sub behavior okay that is so fucking turbo sub behavior i can't even believe it yeah by the time i wake up i already feel like a dirty sinner and then i immediately go into my obedience rituals dude holy shit holy fucking shit I've got this exact um, uh, model together with my Bible and you know prayer books and things like that on my bedside. You never table. should have. Never doubt me. When I when I tell you when I when my gaydar is going, I'm telling you, I'm never wrong about this shit ever. I'm never wrong about this shit. Yeah, he's gonna have to make his daddy get him up, and then he's gonna have to do like cat like catechisms. He's gonna have to do the rosary like 150 times while his dad walks behind him with a fucking paddle for the purpose mm-hmm. nice tablecloth and, and, and now would you call yours a shrine 
Well, I've got a separate one of those. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> so, get areas. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, so I need all the help I can get, you see. So I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've practically got a zone in every room. <laughs> but, I, but, but next to the bed, the first thing to wake up to, it's Mary that I go to when I first wake up. She's the one that I feel, you know, like it, she's the one I want to start my day with. That's wonderful. And as a woman, you must have a, a, a relationship with her too. That I goes, do. Goes deeply. I do. And, um, you know, when, when I fixate on Mary, I can see her smiling at me. Mm-hmm. When, when I really get that uh, long gaze in, at her and, and I, I can just see, I can feel her, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, and then, you know, you can take it to your priest and get it blessed. And um, it's just a wonderful thing. It's nice when, when you are able to do that you get a sort of cumulative effect you know of the, the all, all your all your precious items blessed by the priest you've got you, you can sort of feel the charge yes right? yes well she's lovely um why don't we turn our attention <laughs> to the next item okay that we're going to talk about today and uh, you can tell us what it is uh, and okay. it's, it's sitting right here okay so this necklace that we're about to move into um talking about is their oval miraculous metal an $89 sterling silver art deco fucking bolo tie bullshit. Holy fucking shit. Um, <laughs> Hippie Punk says, this is so uncomfortable. This auntie just does not want to be there and Milo is selling so, so hard. Yeah, Milo is like, get this old lady out of here. I could sell this shit so fast. It's called art deco <laughs> for the style. Um, it's it's quite beautiful. It's got um, two different uh, finishes of the. Uh, are we calling this pewter? I'm not quite sure. It's what it's, it. it's it's difficult. It's, it's it's solid. A it's solid a solid sterling. sterling. Okay, it's solid sterling, but it's got. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's shiny and there's matte, and and putting the two together just makes this. Um, Oh, the she depth. sucks. She said it was pewter, even though it's pure sterling silver. She undersold. That's really bad. You never want to fuck that up. You never want to undersell yourself in that way. She's really bad. Captain Eve with the tier two sub. Thank you so much. Church Militant branded Cat of Nine Tails win. Hit me up, Church Militant. Listen, Church Militant. You know we got some. We we've, we've had we got some bad blood between us. But if you give me a uh, if you give me a holy mackerel themed paddle. And a church militant branded cat of nine tails. I'll do one promo for you. One. Hit me up. Listen, I know you. I know you're not afraid of grifters. You brought Milo on. Why not have Demon Mama? I'll even whip somebody on camera for you. Depth in the um. Oh, I'm trying to think of the right word here. It's dimen- it's, the is dimension. It is it dimension? It's dimensional. So, um, and it is actually raised. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. We've got one here in a box that I'll try to just mm-hmm. show. I, if you, maybe you can catch the light, uh, just glistening on those sections of very highly polished sterling silver. That's probably true, mm-hmm. Gayfesh. Uh, the chain also. That's probably helps true because yeah. the chain there kind of picks out the shiny. Elements and this is another one of those things that has dimension in the fabric, although it's a more stylized. You know, I, maybe maybe you've had a watch like that by one of those uh, French designers, like Erto. You know, those very elegant um, flowing lines of Art Deco. Mm-hmm. This is um, listen. If I was Tradcath, it would be uh, it would be a truly dark dark timeline because if I became a Tradcath, the, ch- the 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 Catholic Church would become popular again. If I became – look, the only th- – listen, that's how you know I'm a good person because I could become a Christian grifter and I could bring the church to the greatest the greatest position it's seen ever, and I won't because fuck that. I would say perfect for a lady. Bat Canary, holy shit, I went out for some food and came back to Milo peddling shit on a late-night TV advertisement. Wrong! He's on a Christian late-time TV advertisement. And yes, Milo Yiannopoulos is now on Christian QVC as a part of his position with the faith militant, or the church militant. Yeah, she's so uncomfy. She's like, oh, his hand movements are so fruity. Uh, it's... It's also quite substantial, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you, if you, Shrew! It is in the description. Shrew! Ah! <laughs> this meme. Display the beautiful. This meme is amazing. Yes. So, um, it's quite nice. And then on the back, the reverse side, 
the metal portrays the M with a cross on the top and the sacred hearts underneath surrounded by the 12 stars. Yes, you should really see that there. And it's also got the mark there showing that it is solid sterling silver. Yes. Uh, now, silver is, I'm, I'm a yellow gold person, but increasingly these days people are... I'm a yellow gold person. You can tell. The necklace, he's got the golden wrist bracelet. He's got the fucking golden hair. He's got the golden, I wonder, yeah? You like the golden? You're like, you're a big fan of, of, of golden being showered all across your body? Really? Hmm. They're preferring silver colors, aren't they? Right. I noticed in the shop, you, you typically stock mostly those silver, those silver tones. That is popular. How would you advise people to shop, you know, based on coloring and age and things like that? Do, who, who should be guided towards the silver? I think anyone can go with silver. I think Suits silver anyone, is but... so neutral. Yeah. I think it's it. The thing about silver Te is she's it... a terrible salesperson. That's the worst answer ever. What you say, you have you can't just say everyone should buy this product. You have to disguise it. You have to be like, well, the wonderful thing about silver is that silver is perfect for combining with basically any of the major colors. See, watch. I can sell better than this old lady. The reason, listen, gold is wonderful, and gold is very ostentatious, but silver, you see, silver pairs very well. It is what we call an enhancer. Silver enhances any other color that you happen to be wearing at the time. You're wearing a beautiful green uh, uh, top. That's going to go wonderful with silver. Silver doesn't distract to the jewelry. It enhances. I bullshitted all of that. I just made all of that up, but you were believing me, weren't you? You see? That sales. By the way, Almighty Duck, thank you very much for the five dollars. Deeply appreciate that. Th thanks for helping me survive a stressful work shift. Have some money. Thank you very much for supporting the show. I do this so that I can keep you all entertained at your jobs. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Silver is a very austere color. Okay. So people who people who take themselves seriously in their faith. Those are the people who are going to be gravitated towards silver. Those who have an understanding of faith that is very, uh, that is very not cold but serious, somber, thoughtful, pensive. Bam. Let's continue, huh? Let's continue. Yeah, I would have gotten you. Yeah, yeah, I know you don't. You're immune because you know the sales tricks. And kind of marries into the color you're wearing. So Ooh, she's getting it a little bit. Neutral, I feel. Saying neutral is bad, though. Um, People don't like neutrality. People don't like the word neutral. You want to say that it pairs with any color, that it enhances other colors. Gold doesn't suit everybody, does it? it if you've got a darker skin tone, it can sometimes look almost almost a bit cheap. It looks a little bit too plasticky, sometimes yellow unless, gold. Unless you have very, very high quality gold. Right, right, right. But even, <laughs> but you see, even, even you know, with, with, it can sometimes, because gold gets a bit more yellowy the higher quality because you know like a 10 carat is a bit of a muted color isn't it? almost champagne gold right the very yellow golds at the high quality. she's like what is this what is this fucking what is this fucking flamboyant weirdo talking about what the hell is this gay color theory that's what that's what her expression says right now this can cannot they don't always suit everybody now when you say champagne gold is that different than rose gold well rose gold's a bit different rose gold's okay. got some color mixed into it i think we have nothing in rose gold <laughs> we're just chatting <laughs> well rose gold is a very difficult thing to match with anyone i i, I mean I, I i i personally love the silver on just about everyone i do too gold um, does work male. better it's true gold does look better with darker skin female i i really think um and this is a this is a lovely example. Now it's it's this is eighteen. You know what's terrible? In another non-Christian timeline, Milo could be one of us. Milo could be a sick ass fucking queer streamer. We could be sitting in another timeline. Demon Mama and Milo are chilling, and Milo Yiannopoulos is like, yeah, I'm I'm I am the number one femboy on Twitch. I hate Nazis, and my daddy says all the time that I'm a good boy for beating up Nazis. That's the alternate timeline. That's the alternate timeline we live in, that we could live in, but we don't. We almost had him with Jderv. What happened to Jderv? What happened? Oh, what happened? What a sad world. This is what they took from us. Yeah, this is what the Catholic Church has taken from you. Every year there is a new, a new cute femboy streamer 
that could become awesome and instead becomes a, a trad calf hyper repressed freakazoid. Oh my god, Devious Chilster. We will we'll never get a Demon Mama and Milo Yiannopoulos, Statler, and Waldorf timeline. Isn't that sad? There is a timeline where somewhere out there in the universe, there's a timeline where Good Milo and Demon Mama are able to be friends. And we're able to be degenerates with no shame. And we could talk about BDSM dynamics. I should hope not. I don't think there's I don't think there's any timeline where I'm a a trad calf because I was like raised diametrically opposed to Catholicism. It would require severe alterations of my timeline. Yeah, weirdly wholesome hypotheticals, but listen, that's what keeps us going in this strange and dark timeline. Nine dollars yeah. because it is solid sterling silver, right? Um, which is uh, why you get that lovely weight of it and this these beautiful polished areas look at her she's know, desperately looking at her at her guide cards because she's so fucking uncomfortable with this gay guy they've done this sort of buff this out. is the look this is a woman who never thought she would have to be stuck in a room with a gay guy ever again because she thought that michael voris is actually ex-gay but now she's realized that the cult that she's in is led by two gay guys in a weird bdsm relationship and she has to deal with that something but it's got, as you said... Oh, yeah, make... absolutely. Bat Canary says, you know they're both thinking nasty slurs about each other right now? 100%. ...in depth to the, to the way mm -hmm. that her mm -hmm. robes and clothes are, are... I mean, she's wonderful. It's lovely. Um, it's in a gift box. Um, as far as gifts go, mm -hmm. these are both very beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, for, uh, do you have to give gifts? Uh, are you sort of Mary-related gifts to women? Or, or can you really give them to everyone? Oh, everyone. Absolutely everyone. I think I think men are just as devoted, if not more, to Mary. There's a sort of um there's a there's a, there's a sometimes a bit of a supposition, maybe, a misconception that for male Catholics they should steer themselves towards certain kinds of devotions and so sort of you know, Archangel yeah. Michael is for the dudes and the Rosary and Mary are for ladies. And, I, and we're getting Catholic gender theory? Milo is Milo is SJW in the Catholic theory. He's doing Catholic SJW gender theory on ch Christian QVC. Oh! And you think I, 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 I love it. This is oh fucking god. Milo's, Milo's fucking Catholic career is the most entertaining shit to me ever. It's so fucking good. <gasps> Catholic gender wokeness via the Christian QVC with Milo Yiannopoulos and Aunt Slur. And actually, that, that, that doesn't really hold at all for, for, for people, especially when you're giving gifts. People are often very delighted to receive anything. Well, you think about it. I, I know a lot of men who um, are so devoted to the rosary. And if you're devoted to That's the what rosary. I said. Chariot. Chariot. That's what I said. Chariot says, I almost respect him in a kind of deeply adversarial way. He's so evil. Yes. I, I look at Milo and I go, oh my god, this little fucking bitch brat is so manipulative. He has grifted his way into a life, a lifetime of luxury. And now he has found a way to grift himself into a 24-7 paid BDSM relationship sneaking under the eyes of the church. And people think that he's devout. This guy is a mastermind. He's undeniably evil. He does harm to the world. He makes the world worse for gay people. He makes the world worse for trans people. But this guy is an evil mastermind. There is no doubt about it. It is so fucking funny. You're devoted to Mary. Right. Do you agree? Uh, absolutely. And particularly somewhere like this, a church militant, you know, this is, a, this is right. quite a male-heavy company it is. and the apostolate has lots of lots of people um over there in the studio in our other mm. building um most of whom are, are boys but they're all they've all got they've all got the rosary on their desk they do i'm sure they we'll do. have a rosary special sometime You're gonna have to <laughs> it'll pick be out. fun it's difficult to choose rosaries oh it is because of that you either you either get those dis i don't want to say disposable but i want you know the ones that you sort of buy knowing they're not going to last forever right and then you've got the what have come across like fine jewelry right 
and you don't it's difficult to find that mid price point i know that you've been well i think for it's yeah i've been searching for one for the store for the longest time um i'll take suggestions <laughs> <laughs> well you can always write into us here at the show <laughs> right at my uh, to uh, milo at churchmilton.com and uh, we'll both end up seeing it let's um milo at stuff. churchmilitant.com oh my god michael voris got his fuck toy into the leadership of the cult of the anti-gay ex-gay conversion cult he got his fuck boy in there what the fuck okay i'm sorry i'm sorry is that not exactly what's fucking going on sorry okay. item today which is a book and we like to give a sort of range. True of chariot. Yeah. This got like literally Milo's just running circles around fucking Carol from the shop. Poor Carol or Janet or whatever her name is. Gretchen or whatever. I thought while you're refreshing your memory mm -hmm. with our, our what what what, what, what mirac let's talk about miraculous. Look at our production team. Look at this level of spit and polish. What a good job they've done here. They did. Um I'm going to read from this book um, in a minute, but before that a Year with Mary, Daily Meditations on the Mother of God by Paul Thigpen. Paul Thigpen. $44.95 for this book. Do you know how... For, this is... What the fuck? Give, give, just give us a... Uh, give the, the viewers a, an idea of what it is. It's called A Year with Mary, but what does that mean? What do you get from Well, book? this is the deep dive. Okay, this is when you want to get All serious the deep about your devotion. And um, I've done some consecrations, um, but this is spending a whole year with Mary. So each and every day, you can look up a passage and um, go through your day. Like this would be excellent for you, Milo. If you have this next to your bed, yeah. you wake up and have this um, Mary. Look at, how, look at how studious he's being. Oh my God, he's playing the point. Look at him. He's such a studious little, little, little schoolboy. He's so studious. No pun intended. With this, yes. you know, you gaze at her and then you open up your book to the day and start your day that way. I think it'd be excellent. And by the way, we should probably mention that if you're looking at this on the screen during this program, and it may change from time to time, depending on when you're watching, we do have offers on. So keep an eye on the words on the screen because they won't only give you the price of the items that we're talking about and where you should go to buy them, but occasionally we will have specials. For instance, this is a Mary, this is a Mary special today, and we will from time to time have offers, for instance, you know, $10 off if you, you know, if you, if like you, feel, a bundle price. If you feel like picking up all three. So keep an eye on the screen, because depending on when you watch this, the offers may change. Uh, guys, guys, I think we have a new segment to watch. I think we have a new fucking segment to watch. This is episode one of the Church Militant Shop. Milo's doing a series. We're going to be able to watch him try to shill every single fucking weird Christian Catholic item you can imagine. What's next? Is he going to be selling like a, a rotary, like a, I mean, a rotary, a, a rosary launcher? Like you get a gun that lets you go to a, st a stadium and fire rosaries at people who need them? I can't wait. Is he gonna have like a? Is he gonna have like a a a a, a Paul the Apostle Funko Pop? Um, and the latest thing will always be on the screen. I thought I'd read just one of these. And well, it's not good night, Miss Nibiru. Author's name. Yes, his name is Paul Thigpen. You're gonna make a holy mackerel Funko Pop? Listen, I okay. I would listen. I'm sorry. I would buy a. I would buy. I would buy a holy cow and holy mackerel loan shark. I would buy the whole Funko Pop set. If they made those Funkos, I would have to buy them. I would be contractually obligated to buy them. It's the it's I just have to. And he's responsible, isn't he, for those spiritual warfare manuals? Yes. At least one yes, of them. Yes, he is. Possibly all Absolutely. Of them. Uh, uh -oh. I've got the uh -oh. I've got the this um manual for spiritual warfare. Right. I've got the manual for Eucharistic adoration, I think it's mm -hmm. called, uh, the title Carol, is. Carol, yes. And there's a Marian one too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Although what we've chosen today is a larger book with more in it. Um, and, and one more thing about this book, A Year uh, with Mary, is we have um, A Year with the Fathers, A Year with the Church, um, um, A Year with the Bible, so th this is um, not the only one that we have devotion for a year to um, something in the Catholic Church.
and it's the subtitle is daily meditations on the mother of god and what that means is it's not just hey mother mere set i'm doing good prayers and writings poems all kinds of thoughts and literature really mm -hmm. um from a variety of different thinkers including many saints on the subject of mary so it's not you know some people love reading their bible they do the bible in a do you find it funny that all the people that have religious trauma then go to be like super fixated on religious iconography? I also speak from my Catholic experience. Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, like Catholic iconography is, is, there is some beautiful shit. And when you grow up in that, you know, when you grow up in proximity to that shit, you start to learn what stuff's cool and what's not. So it makes sense. It makes sense that people who have like religious trauma um, end up incorporating some of the good things from their religion into the things that they look at. Some people go really far with that, but not all of them. Ah, yes, I've got my copy of Spiritual Warfare, a ball gag, and a bucket of lube. Yup! Also, it's really funny here. These things are the easiest book in the world. These things are the easiest things in the world to write, okay? If you wanna, if you wanna make a reliable, um, if you wanna make a reliable income for the rest of your life, consider writing a Christian daily devotional. There are thousands of Christian daily devotionals. And as long as you can pitch it well, people will buy it. All that they are is you take one page and you write up, you copy paste a Bible verse, and then you write one mildly thoughtful paragraph about that Bible verse. And it doesn't need to be anything because the only thing that people do, people read these out of obligation. They don't care what's actually in the devotional. The shorter and sweeter, the better. And people will buy your fucking book. Just saying, look, I know I've seen literally thousands of independent devotionals and, and they need, everybody needs a new one every year. You don't want to use the same devotional. You don't want God to think you're getting tired of him. You know, I'm dead serious. I'm fucking dead serious. Some people love reading scripture. Other people, you know, a little bit more apprehensive about diving into bits of the Bible blind because they think, oh, you know, just I'm just not sure what I'm going to get out of it because some of it's, you know, it's a sort of historical names or whatever. This is um, selected to be endlessly fascinating. You the know, fan fic Christian devotional. There you go. And style and author. There's lots from St. Alphonsus Liguori, but there's also, you know, uh, Louis de Montfort, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. All kinds of different meditations and thoughts on Mary. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd read one from a fellow Brit, uh, the Blessed John Henry Newman. Since okay. British writing always sounds better. I always awesome. love to hear you read. Well, thanks. Um, so I'll, I'll just read you. This is day 155. Huh. So that they're, the good thing about this is they're numbered so you can start it at any time. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to wait until January to start your <laughs> yes. year with her. You can just you can keep track yourself. Maybe just use a pencil to check them off or something. Um, so it's called Mary Vessel of Devotion. And in this, the Blessed John Henry Newman um, illustrates... Unironically, unironically, Gayfesh. Gayfesh says, shit, I bet there's some serious money to be made for me to find Jesus again after being an, a an, an atheist and then writing devotionals for those with l like who are losing their faith. Unironically, if you wanted to be hor a horrific grifter, you could do that. You'd be causing uh, unimaginable psych psychic torment to anybody who read your book, but, but... It would indeed sell like hotcakes. Meaning of devotion and shows how Our Lady overflowed with devotion to her son. To be devout is to be devoted. We know what is meant by a devoted wife or daughter. It's one whose thoughts center in the person so deeply loved, so tenderly cherished. She follows him about with her eyes. She's ever seeking some means of serving him. And if her services are very small in their character, that only shows how intimate they are and how unceasing. And especially if the object of her love be weak or in pain or near to die, still more intensely does she live in his life and know nothing but him. This intense devotion towards our Lord, forgetting self and love for him, is displayed in St. Paul, who says, I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. But as great as was St. Paul's devotion to our Lord, much greater was that the there is yes he picked this on purpose he picked this on fucking purpose are you f fucking kidding me are you fucking kidding me it's a virgin because she was his mother and because she had him and all his sufferings actually before her eyes 
and because she had a long intimacy of 30 years with him, and because she was, from her special sanctity, so unspeakably near to him in spirit. When, then, he was mocked, bruised, scourged, and nailed to the cross, she felt as keenly as if every indignity and torture inflicted on him was struck at herself. She could have cried out in agony at every pang of his. This is called her compassion, or her suffering with her son. And it arose from this that she was the vessel of devotion, unlike any other. And you have, in, as well as these passages, um, a question each day so that you can consider what Mary means to you, your relationship to her, and then uh, a small closing prayer as well. Wonderful. Which is lovely. So we'll um, we'll pop this back up here so you can look Your at relationship home. to a woman who died 3,000 years... Oh, boy. God. Oh, God. This, by the way, is one of those... It's called an ultra-soft cover. Right. Um, t- tell us a bit about that. Well, it's it's kind of like just below leather, but it's very nice, and it feels so nice. Don't say just below leather. Oh, my God. This lady is such a bad saleswoman. You don't say just below leather. You say softer than leather. It's softer than even leather, not just below leather. That sounds like you're offering something that's worth less than leather. Holy shit, she's so bad. Than the hands. It's very oh, yeah, Milo had a good night after this one. I'm telling you that much. Pliable. It just feels comfortable. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Yeah, one of the things that's nice about this is you- Lady Kelgana, oh my god. That is so fucking funny. I now want to write a Christian devotional that subtly encourages a cuckold relationship. I would be ma- I would be milking dumb fuck fundies of their cash while corrupting them with my dirty ass fetish. Lamau, please. <laughs> you you should really think about this. As a devoted husband, you should always as a as a husband devoted both to your wife and to Jesus, you should always give Jesus preference. Never, never let Jesus never take and put yourself before Jesus. You should, much as Jesus did, lay yourself down for others. If your wife is needed, you lay yourself down. If Jesus wants to wants to be with your wife over you, you should give credence to Jesus Christ. Lay down and let her let him bring her to orgasm. People with books they cherish like this, and especially because you've all got such busy lives, you have to rush out. Yeah, don't put yourself before Jesus. Um, Sometimes. Don't put yourself before Jesus or the angels or any other holy divinity. You know, if a big strapping young angel wants to rail your wife, you know, just don't get in the way, dude. Book, and you need to stuff it in your bag. Mm -hmm. And when you have a leather with the hard covers and things, you're always worried about getting the the edges dog eared or bending the cover or something. The wonderful thing about this, I mean, Within limits, obviously. The wonderful thing about this is if it is in your handbag and it sort of, you know, is, is around a, you know, a, a, a thermos or something, it pops straight back. Right. And it was really durable and it looks as good at the end of the year as it did at the beginning. And so once you retire it for a little bit and then perhaps after a year want to come back and do it again, right. it looks like you just got it. Um, it really does hold up beautifully. <laughs> My girlfriend is like God in that in her house, no one comes before her as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Let Jesus come first. Yep. Paper in this is nice too. They've it got is. they've got lovely. It's sort of a cream it's... with darker cream decorations. The font is beautiful. High gloss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. High gloss paper, so it looks like you're reading something of really high quality. Yeah, it's lovely. That's nice. So that very, one, very nice. if you're interested in a year with Mary by Paul Thickman, that's forty four ninety five. Um, and and like as as we say, it's a very it's a very durable book. It's even got. It's even got stitching down the front. So it's made, it's almost and made the like edges a handbag, are all isn't it? gold. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot, about mm-hmm. that. I forgot about that. We're so used to seeing that, aren't we, from Bibles <laughs> that we forget. It's actually quite a, quite, it's quite a special and expensive thing to have on a book is this lovely uh, gilt binding. We get spoiled, don't we, Catholics? Because we, do. we, put, we put gold on everything. <laughs> we do. <laughs> but it, it, is, it is a beautiful thing. Um, pop it back up there so you can see it. And that's forty four ninety five, uh, four hundred 400 pages, and... Um, you can see the size of that. Well, this has been this has been lovely. I think we're going it's to do more. It's been nice. I think and we're I, going to do more of these. I hope so. It's a lot of fun. If you could recommend just one of these products uh, for people at home who mm-hmm. maybe would like to eke out their spending a little bit uh, over over time, or who are trying to choose for themselves, 
Is there one thing that you would say would bring you closer to Mary, something that you would find especially precious? I'd have to go with the one I have, which is which is the Adorn Mary statue. I think so too. Um, also, the most expensive one on this entire thing. Of course, they're gonna go. She just. Uh, it almost looks like it's real clothing. I don't know how to describe it to you. I, I hope the camera's really coming in on this because it's just... I, is the word fluid, Milo, that I want to yeah, say? I, it's, 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 sometimes you'll go into one of those museums, you know, the Louvre or the British Museum or whatever, and you'll see some neoclassical statue by Rodin or something, and you will not believe that it isn't fabric. That it isn't fabric like draped over, you know, some mm -hmm. nubile limb or something, you know. Right, right. But this, it's got, it's got that feel to it where you, you almost do a double take sometimes. You know, so how did they render this in this <laughs> solid material? And and the thing I come, I know you love the stars on I the do. on, I do. on the shrub. Yeah. The thing that I keep coming back to is just this wonderful face, which is is it, it you're lucky to get just the perfect face sometimes with Mary because even with you know very very expensive statuary and iconography and all, all the rest of it, sometimes they're you know <laughs> they don't quite right. fit the typical, but they've nailed it with this. Right, and and Mary, the Blessed Mother of God. She's so important to us, especially being Catholic. And I, I just think that um, she's like right there. She's to be honored and treasured. And what she, what she went through and the suffering she felt of her son, it can't be compared. You, you, I mean, what he went through was unbelievable, but what she suffered through watching that, every mother that has children just, it, when you really get to the- <laughs> What a, look at his expression! He's like, God damn it, Kathy, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking lose it, you're blowing it! My dad, he's right here, he's like, fuck, it's dragging on, we're not gonna sell the Mary statues and daddy's gonna be really fucking mad at me. He's so pissed right now. He's like, fuck, if this, if she fucks it up and I don't get my, I don't get my goodies, I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to throw a tantrum. That's what he's doing right now. Depths of what that would be like. Mm -hmm. And even people that even miss. In his mind, he's like, you stupid cunt. You stupid bitch. You dullard. You idiot. You're ruining the sales pitch. You idiot. You're ruining this for daddy. I mean, it's just um, astounding what she went through. And um, it's, it's a big part of our faith. Yes. All of this is enriching for us, I think, and um, a good salute to Mary. I think I'm with you on the uh, statue being the right choice. <laughs> well, thank you, Deborah. Um, we Deborah, will be back. sorry. Oh my God, this is just so fucking incredible. I'll do. What a fucking gift! What a fucking gift! The Milo Yiannopoulos sales show is just so fucking amazing. Uh oh! Oh no! Wait! The they did one on. Oh no! They did one about trans people. Oh no! Do I have to react to it? Do I have to react to this thing? No! This is gonna be painful. Oh! It's only six minutes. It's only six minutes. Okay, 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 we're doing it, we're doing it. Shut up, shut up, we're doing it, we're going, we're going, here we go. percent or 18 million. That's the latest estimate for people who identify as LGBT in the United States. This percentage has jumped from 3.5% in 2012 and 4.5% in 2017. Notice the question, hold on. Notice the question, do you personally identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender? This is self-reporting. As it turns out, when people feel like they're going to be more accepted, they're more likely to tell you that they're gay or trans. If they think you're going to freak out, they'll lie to you. That's that's the that describe that explains literally everything. The term LGBT stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. This term was coined by Dr. John F. Olivan, who in his 1965 book, Sexual Hygiene and Pathology, called the term transsexualism 
misleading, stating, where the compulsive urge reaches beyond female vestments and becomes an urge for gender or sex change, transvestism becomes transsexualism. The term is misleading, actually. Transgenderism is what is meant, because sexuality is not a major factor in primary transvestism. Transgender is erroneously defined as people who have a gender identity or gender expression that differs from the sex that they were assigned. Erroneously defined? Dude, that was one guy's term from fucking 1960-something. The term has changed, you fucking idiot. At birth. It's that simple. It's just terms grow over time. In his book, Hostage to the Devil, Malachi Martin says, confusion is always of the devil. God That's right, everybody. Confusion is always of the devil. If you ever feel confused, ever, it's the devil. If you feel confused about, you know, why your shit is, is black and full of, 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 uh, of, of blood clots, that's the devil. If you're confused because you've been, you've been driving around in circles for 30 minutes trying to find the Wendy's, that's the devil. If you're confused because your homework is difficult, that's the devil. If you're confused because you're watching the stream and you don't know how the fuck we ended up where we're at, that's the devil. God is not a confusing God. God is clear. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand him. Well, of course, because he's... <laughs> What is this? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the most Catholic looking motherfucker I've ever seen in my entire life. This guy has the Catholic image. This this guy is it, a, a, a thousand like like a thousand years ago. This guy would have been a fucking wait a minute. He's literally hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's the same man. Watch. Same man. It's the He's the same man. It's the guy from the, he's the archdeacon from fucking the hunchback of Notre Dame. Was I, 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 I'm such a fucking, I swear to God. It's the same fucking man. Good night, mellow anarchist. So far above us, so it's hard for us to grasp Hellfire, so dark us, fire. He gives us parables and he this gives us fire easier ways to digest my his skin. truth. But he can neither deceive nor be deceived, whereas the devil can only deceive. It's his, it's his fallen nature now that he's chosen and has embraced. All he can do is deceive. So again, he shows himself a parasite to good. St. Paul tells us, subject your thoughts to Christ, because this is where sin starts. Sin starts right here and in your heart. So. If the devil can confuse your mind, he can also confuse your heart. You're going to put your... This is a man who looks like he's confused very frequently. That's all I'm going to say. This guy's expression screams, Wow, the devil has been doing a lot of work in my life. I was confused as to where I left my keys. I'm confused as to who I am or what I'm doing. Affections in the wrong places. And you're going to love anything but God, and that's what he wants. He doesn't care what lie of his you accept. He doesn't care how you're confused. He just wants you to not believe the truth so he can pull you away from God from any which angle. In this transgender world, let's say, this is just one way to get people. This transgender world? We live in a transgender world now? Looks like, looks like somebody's been working ahead of me. Who's been getting, who's been getting out ahead of me? I thought, I think we've been behind on schedule, but this guy's claiming we got a transgender world already? I hadn't even finished building transgender land yet. Alberta Lucille Hart, or Alan Hart, would later become the first so-called female-to-male transsexual in the United States. Fuckers. Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. Fuck the way that you talk about historical trans people. Hart, a woman, fell in love in college with one Eva Cushman. Unable to fight her disordered tendencies in 1917, her disordered tendencies? Dude, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Hart got a hysterectomy, undergoing surgery to remove her uterus. Dude, he's hot. Dude, what the fuck? He's hot. Oh my god, he's fucking hot as shit. Look at this hot motherfucker. He's hot as fuck. Oh my god. He looks like Daniil Dankovsky.
The surgery was done by- Wait a minute, he looks like Daniil Dankovsky. What is- why am I- what the fuck? Am I wrong? Hold on, minus the glasses. He fucking looks like Daniil Dankovsky from Pathologic 2. Is that a motherfucking Pathologic 2 reference? Is that a fucking motherfucking Pathologic 2 reference? Is that a motherfucking Pathologic 2 reference? Is that a motherfucking Pathologic 2 reference? Canonically trans Daniil. You guys don't even know how deep it goes. It's actually true. Dr. Joshua Allen Gilbert. At he kind of looks like me. Actually, he does kind of look like me. I think it's because we have similar glasses, though. Why is everyone convinced Danko is trans mask? Also his height? Hold on a second. Let me explain. The reason why everyone is convinced that Daniil Dankovsky is uh, the bachelor is trans mask is because he was created by a trans mask artist whose who's OC is a trans mask that looks identical to Daniil Dankovsky and it likely became Daniil Dankovsky for Pathologic. The, the the artist who created Daniel Dankovsky, uh, Dankovsky for Pathologic literally has an OC that looks identical um, to Daniel and is trans mask. Yes. Yes. Yep. Let's continue. The University of Oregon. Although Dr. Gilbert went through with the surgery, he said Hart was, quote, afflicted with a mysterious disorder for which I, Gilbert, have no explanation. Worse even than homosexuality, uh, transgenderism involves a... <laughs> Worse even than homosexuality. <laughs> We're super gay. <laughs> rejection of creation. A rejection of the fundamental realities of our existence, of the natural world, of God's hey, order. Where's the fucking Mary? This fucker said he had a Mary in his living room. Do you guys remember him saying he had a shrine in his living room in the other video? Where's the fucking shrine, bitch? Show us the shrine. I don't see no fucking shrine. Of things. Um, but there's also a political dimension to it, too. We've seen over the last 20 years the emergence of this trend. You know, I'm perfect. There's nothing I need to change or improve about myself. It's the world that needs to change to conform to my wishes. Um, this what? has now reached its apotheosis with transgender. He's sitting on it. Oh, God. Encourage people to mutilate their own physical bodies to concord with psychiatric dysfunction. True, everybody. Talk about that mutilating of the physical body. Listen, I didn't have to become trans to mutilate my physical body, you fucking clown. Go back to, go back to your sales pitch, your QVC fit sales pitch, you malignant toad. And that's why so many of us correct the world must change for us We will change the world with our own fucking hands and our fucking super brains You should fear us because your world is dying your worldview the worldview of people like church militant is dying Because of pe people like me and because of people like you my lovely viewers We are killing the horrible Catholic vision for the world And I'm damn proud of it that's on God. find this um, so terrifying and so uncomfortable to think about. In the run-up to the 2020 election, on the topic of transgenderism, Joe Biden revealed his radical stance on the subject. The idea that an 8-year-old child or a 10-year-old child decides, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. It may make my life a lot easier. There should be zero discrimination. A full day before Biden took office, he selected a man pretending to be a woman, Richard Levine. Dude, fuck you. Dude, fuck you. Fuck these people. Seriously. Who now goes by Rachel Levine as assistant health secretary. Homosexuality and transgenderism have always been understood, even by the corrupt medical and mental health industries, as a true mental illness. <laughs> even by the corrupt, they had to throw that one in there. Remember, they don't believe in science except when it aligns with them. Just, just remember, they don't believe in medicine or science except when they can conveniently use it. They just, th like, this is a self-report of unbelievable proportions. Just listen to this again. Just listen to that Richard again Levine, real quick. Who now goes by Rachel Levine as assistant health secretary. 
Homosexuality and transgenderism have always been understood, even by the corrupt medical and mental health industries, as a true mental illness. Whoops. Bit of a self-report there. Yes. In 1973, the American Psychiatric Association, the APA, made a change in its categorizing of homosexuality, moving it from the more accurate psychiatric disorder to sexual orientation disturbance. The APA's reasoning for the change... When was this? In the fucking 70s, dude? Man, you guys suck. ...had nothing to do with psychiatry or science, but it was done because, quote, we feel we have to keep step with times. The disorder of homo... Yeah, because it's not a disorder. It's not a disturbance. It's nothing. It's a naturally occurring thing. Some people are fucking gay. And guess what? You're not getting rid of us. You want to know why I think... Over the years, I used – when I was younger, I used to think we're here, we're queer, get used to it was not that good of a chant. But now I realize it is the best chant of all. We're here, we're queer, get used to it, or fucking get out. We're not fucking asking. Understood? It's not a fucking question. Homosexuality has been completely normalized by the mental health industry. Good. And the full acceptance of transgenderism is next. Good. While cries from the left demand that being trans is not a mental disorder, common sense... Because it isn't. Sense because it, it stretches the, in the conceptualization of a mental disorder to claim that somebody who simply wants to dress the way they want to dress and express the way they want to express is a mental disorder, that would mean you fuckers are, are mentally disordered as well. Though I'm sure you probably are okay with that. ...by scientific data is not on their side. In October... Yeah, surely, remember, you should take... Remember, everybody. Everyone, just remember, you should always take the advice of people who just talk to you about being able to feel the warmth of Mother Mary's energy coming from a rubber statue of Mary, those are the people that you should listen to about who's crazy and who's not, okay? Yeah, let's just keep that in check. Can we keep our, can we keep everything, can we, can we do a vibe check real quick on that? 2019, the American Journal Pencil of Psychiatry cakes, thank you very much. published a study titled Reduction in Mental Health Treatment Utilization Among Transgender Individuals after gender-affirming surgeries. The study found that, as the title suggests, gender-affirming surgery was associated with reduced mental health treatment. The yes, because they don't need it. Editors of the journal and authors of the study. Wow, imagine how that works. If you get the treatment that you need, you don't have to become a lifelong patient of psychiatry. Wow. Wow! Who could have seen that coming? Then issued a correction which showed that transgender surgery provides no mental health benefit. But uh, not only just, did they just switched, they just switched from the correction to the journal and some random the study, commentary article. This then is just propaganda. A correction, like, don't listen which to any of this shit. That transgender but. surgery provides no mental health benefit. Hmm. Notice how they switched over to another well website with all of these, uh-oh, who's this? Who's this? Paul McHugh? Oh, wait, Paul McHugh? You mean the notable anti-trans doctor who published pseudoscience about trans people? Oh, uh-oh, we got a sussy baka there. showed that transgender surgery provides no mental health benefit. But not only did the correction show what everybody already knew, that transitioning procedures don't help mental health, but they do the exact opposite. People who received gender-affirming surgery were more likely to be treated for anxiety disorders compared with those who had not received gender-affirming surgery. You were made a certain way, and as much as you rail against your what? nature, what? you can't change it. It, you, you have to accept it and embrace it and that is listen so just because you can't change yourself from looking like a cartoon catholic doesn't mean that the rest of us can't have some fucking agency my dude just because you literally look like the fucking amalgamation of every single catholic priest that has ever lived since the middle ages doesn't mean that everyone else can't okay
is the key to happiness, both temporal and supernatural happiness in heaven as well. Yeah, uh, Jessica Metal says, oh yeah, Paul McHugh, the doctor that got laughed out of Johns Hopkins University for bullshit studies on trans people, also a major trad cath, which would explain why the church militant would cite him. Interesting how that works, right? Well, because God made us to ultimately be with him. Yeah, imagine if they went this hard against old Christian men who get hair transplants or Viagra users. In heaven, that's our supernatural end. And you're never, ever going to reach that end by trying to change your very nature. And why would you want to? The most important thing for anybody struggling with same-sex attraction, gender dysphoria, whatever, that will not make you happy. What will make you happy is a life with God, a life of sanctifying totally, grace. Totally, dude. And a life where Yeah, you remember, if, if you feel like you're unhappy in the role, the best thing that you should do is just basically lock yourself in a closet for the rest of your life and just pray really hard. That will definitely make you feel better and definitely won't li lead to you living a regrettable life that immediate that when you that upon your deathbed you realize you didn't do a single thing you wanted to do while you were alive. God, I hate these people. Holy shit. Every time, every time we revisit their main content, I remember why the fuck I oh my god, why the fuck I hate so many Christians. Holy fucking shit. It I I'm so sorry. I really do my best to not be um I really do my best to not be a, a giant bitch about this shit, but shit like the the church militant makes me remem remember why I fucking hate Christianity. Yeah, remember how happy you were suppressing your identity as a devoted Christian? Oh, it's, a, it's so good. Living your life as a lie where every single day you're aware of the fact that you're not living the way that you want to live is a great way to live. It definitely doesn't do life-ruining damage to your psyche. Dude, fuck these people. Fuck these people. Holy shit. Fuck Faith Militant. Fuck Miley Yiannopoulos. Fuck Michael Voris. All of these fucking grifters. This is, this is exactly the shit that I'm talking about when I say that they do actual harm. It's funny to laugh at them, and I wish there was an alternate timeline where we got to know what, like, a good Milo Yiannopoulos looks like. But let's be real. Milo Yiannopoulos, in his pursuit of a daddy that will punish him properly, he does in irreparable damage to, to young gay christians in the united states okay i'm serious fuck holy fucking shit holy shit that made my blood boil oh well same old same old same fucking old